Wonderful. So, Damien, thank you so much for this conversation in which we're going to talk about your journey with uh, agentic AI managing customer experience. So, I'm extremely excited about this conversation for two specific reasons. One is customer experience. That's been very close to my own heart right from my PhD days 25 years back. So I'm really excited to see that you're also equally passionate about customer experience. The second thing that really excites me is that you've actually got this working in your network for a while now, and you're starting to see the benefits. And that's really exciting, because I'm a big believer in small wins and what you learn uh, from those wins, and then, so you, then you can go on and do bigger and better things. So with that being said, um, let me start with a question that makes sure we are all on the same page. Um, everybody has their interpretation of what customer experience is, so I'd like to hear from you. What do you mean by customer experience, and why is it so important to you? Yep. Before I start about the, today's topic, just a quick introduction. So when we talk about um, HCHK or Hutchison Telecom Hong Kong, um, the brand that we carry is Tree. So it's like Tree UK, Tree Hong Kong. We are sister companies. So coming back to the user experience, um, in Hong Kong, for 5G networks, we have reached 99.9% .9 population coverage of 5G for many years now. However, we will, we will still get a lot of customer complaints, right? So then, when I work with my team, we try to understand where are these complaints coming from because, you know, the population coverage is, is ubiquitous already. Everywhere has 5G. And then what we realize is that the way we look at user experience is, it needs to change. So for example, today, my team will talk to me about the cell throughput or the drop call rate or the bit error rate, so on and so forth. It's from a network's perspective rather than the user's perspective. A layman way to say this is the customer don't care about all of the metrics that I mentioned just now, but they do care that whether the, the resolution of their YouTube video is reduced or but they have a experience a buffer. Again, they don't care about the throughput as long as the YouTube doesn't buffer. So this is where we went on a journey to say how do we how do we be better at this? So to us customer experience is not network date network metric. It's more of a user experience uh, metric. There's no industry standard, but we are trying to um, work with what we have now. Yeah. OK, fantastic. So um, tell us a bit about from managing your network perspective or how you perceive, how you want to benchmark your network and its performance. Why is customer experience a good starting point? What are some of the reasons you think you want to start there? OK, I, I think. OK, coming to expand the challenges, coming back to the, to the complaint that I mentioned just now, there are many scenarios, or many, not scenarios, many instances as well as scenarios that a customer calls up and they are not happy about an experience, and my team would investigate, and very often they would just come back to three, we like acronyms, you know, we are technical guys, they come back with NFF, no fault found. So the RAN is fine, the transmission is fine, the core is fine. But then the customer is still irate, the customer is still disappointed. So that's where we realized that when we have um, this tool from Canopus, what we realized is this, that the user experience is not just our network. The user experience starts from the app, the OTT app, to the device, to our network, to the OTT servers. All of that, if anything goes wrong, the customer would say that, ah, oh, the network is unreliable. So that's where we expanded the, our, if you may, unfortunately, we have to adopt the responsibility of the whole end-to-end -end chain. It's not just our network. Yeah. Fantastic. So I think reading between the lines, some of the things you've said are that um, customers always look at the network as the first problem, even mm. if it's not the problem. Yes. Secondly, experience gives you more of a holistic end-to-end -end view of what's going on, yep. and it lets you kind of start top-down in yes, looking definitely. into the problems rather than a bottom-up element-based approach. Yes, or uh, else you, like I say, no for found. And, exactly. and uh, the nuance with that, um, Vijay, what you mentioned is that 
the app experience is different for every app because we talk about it could be a server, OTT server issue, but it doesn't affect another OTT server, but the user will think that this network is unreliable. I'll give you an example. Um, one of my colleagues, a senior colleague, complained to me that her music app you know, had buffering, and the first reaction is she said that, oh, does this area not have a good coverage? The RAN team came back to say the coverage excellent. For the RAN people here, it was 80-something dB. Excellent, no, no issue. But when they investigate and they took two days, um, this was prior to Canopus days, it took two days for them to investigate that what happened was that, uh, I won't name names here, one OTT, one big OTT um, server, it, they, they brought down their CDN for maintenance. And when they brought down their CDN, all the traffic was served by an overseas server, and my IP transit was congested, which congested the app that has, is, is picking up the music from a Japan server. And I asked my colleague, were you listening to Japanese song? She said, no, um, it was a Hong Kong song. So this is the beast that we are dealing with, is the internet is a very hard to manage um, well, I don't know how to call it. It's very hard to manage. Hence, we need to have very good tools to assist. And, and the second example happened where after we had the tool, um, both of my phones, Google doesn't work on one phone, Google works on another phone. This is Google, Google Maps. And very quickly, within two hours, the engineer said that there's three Google servers that had an issue. Hence, and I'm, I'm it's my luck that I'm connected to one of the problematic servers. And then we raise a ticket to Google. Google fix it. Sorry, I didn't want to name names. So one of the <laughs> service providers. And then they fix it very quickly. So that is where, like I say, the user experience is no longer just the network. It's the whole end-to-end the whole -end of it. Absolutely, absolutely. And all the complexity in the network means there's lots of moving parts, a lot of finger pointing. Yes. And so starting with experience top down, you really get to see that there is an impact, and then you can drill down and see where the impact yep. is. So on that note, tell us, before you had the Agentic AI, mm. you had a workflow. You probably got customer complaints, calling in, yep. or filing some reports, or scraping social media that there was some problem in your network. And then tell us a bit about the workflow that you had and some of the pain points around sure, it. Like, sure. Why was it so complex? Was it costing you a lot? Give us a bit of a sense. Yeah. So like I mentioned about the example just now where a big OTT did a maintenance and so on and so forth, um, that took a lot of effort, and it affected the IP transit. It's completely unrelated, as well as the IP transit was carrying the music from another server. It's just too many dimensions to it to investigate. And I'll be honest, you know, we are in this business for long. The way we will deal with this customer is we will tell customer service to, to call the customer or respond to the customer. Do you still have an issue? And the customer will say, ah, no. So we'll be like, case closed, done. You don't have to deal with it anymore. Something is wrong, or something has recovered by itself. So we, we are used to closing cases without knowing the root cause, and all because this is a colleague who complained, we had to get to the bottom of it. It spent, uh, my team, well, I think it's, it's maybe a five-man team spent two days to try to find what, what happened to, to the music server. So that was the effort before, before um, we had agentic AI. I absolutely appreciate it. And also, as a user, it can often be frustrating when you have an issue, yeah. you report it, but then you can't reproduce it. So yeah. there's frustrations on both sides, from the user perspective, but also from the, your team's perspective, mm. the time and effort spent and really finding no fault with it. So OK, now tell us a bit about you deployed the agentic AI. Yep. It's in place. It's been working for a while. Yep. Tell us a bit about some of the benefits it's bringing. How is it changing your workflows? What are the gaps it's covering or the pain points it's solving? And what are some of the benefits that it's bringing to, your, to you and your team? Yeah, so what I mentioned just now, the workflow is still reactive. Our maturity was at that level. So if a customer complains, we can look into a lot of um, data to identify that, you know, it's a server issue or so on and so forth, right? But this is reactive. With Agentic AI, what we, what we can do is it's, it's 
proactive in the sense that it's not predictive. Obviously, we don't know what will happen in the internet. But then it's proactive in the sense that most of the, oh, sorry, I'll, I'll do it the other way. Most of the app outage, we will know from customer complaint, unless it's a major outage. If it's a small outage, like I, just, I mentioned just now, if it's just a few servers that is affected, it's very hard to detect by us. Usually, the metric will just drop slightly, and you wouldn't know. Unless it's a major outage, then we will know. But now, with Agentic AI, even the slightest degradation of certain servers, we will be able to tell. And with the uh, uh, agent, it will generate the details. These are the latency, so on and so forth, of these few servers compared to other servers. And then we will send a ticket to, to the OTTs. So then, we, in a way, we don't have to wait for the customer to complain for us to start triaging. Whenever we see something, the agent will start processing it so that we can send a ticket over. Fantastic. So the agent is able to continuously analyze mm. the customer experience, yes. literally on an application-by-application -application basis. Yep. And whenever it's noticing that there's some kind of a drop, it's then able to go and do that investigation yep. and come back and generate a report which is able to tell your team, hang on, the problem's actually, there has been a dip in experience, but the problem's really not in your network. It's somewhere outside. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to spend your team's time and effort to yeah. troubleshoot your network, look at the RAN, look at the core, look at the transit, et cetera, because the problem's actually somewhere out. Yeah, so I, I missed out one point just now. Usually when we have, in the customer service team, you will have outage board. That's very common, you know. This site has an outage wherever so that the customer service team can handle the customer. So working with the customer service team, my team is developing an outage board for OTT servers. Because when the customer calls in, we will be able to tell, ah, are you talking about um, this outage in 3 o'clock where this app was affected? So then we can deal with the customer complaints better. Yeah. OK, fantastic. Um are there any specific instances that uh, you can recall where you really found that advantage with the speed and the accuracy of this agentic AI workflows that you have deployed in your network yes. that you think really brought you instant benefits? Yes, I, I guess I'll expand on the, the use case. Just now I talk about app server. One, one key revenue, I'm not sure about Europe. Europe is very different, but in Hong Kong, we, do, we still have a healthy roaming uh, business. And because this tool looks at all metrics, right, all data, it doesn't have to be network data, we noticed that one of our roaming partners had poor experience. So then we raised a ticket very quickly to that roaming partner, and the roaming partner network replied that, ah, they didn't pick up the issue because their network was fine, right? If their network has an issue, they would know. The root cause was the connectivity between us. So without that tool, we have so many roaming partners, it's very hard to detect. The, the, you would just imagine that for whatever reason, there is there's less usage in that country and that operator. So with that, um, the capability, this is Agentic AI is just a tool. Yeah. It detects the, the anomalies or the outliers, and then it can help to investigate, and we can so just now, we talk about the OTT apps or OTT servers. Now I talk about the, the what they call it, roaming partners. Yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. And, and I think what you said is that this would be really hard to do manually because you've got many, many roaming yes. partners. Yes. Sometimes there is a, drip in, a drop in experience. It's for a short period, only affecting a small number or a relatively moderate yep. number of users. And it's just impossible for humans to stay on top of this and then go and do the investigation, yep. whereas all this is being done autonomously by these AI agents. So that's, yeah. that's fantastic. Looking forward, um, seems you're already getting some business benefits out of the agentic workflows that are already operational in your network. Looking forward, what do you see, what would you like to see in six months, 12 months, and beyond yep. that you think uh, could really give you a lot of business value. Yeah, I'll just take a one step back and, and give a bit of context uh, and how am I using this. The, the network vendors are very good at managing their own elements. So I'm a Huawei shop in Hong Kong, so the RAN is Huawei, the core is Huawei. And when, when I work with them, 
they are very skilled in knowing what's the issue in the network, right? That's, that's our bread and butter. Hence, I'm positioning this to try to find issues that is out of the network. And this tool is very good at telling me that whether the issue happens in network or outside of the network. Now, in the future, what I hope for is, and this is where I, I enjoy conferences like this, where in the morning I heard another session about you know, hyper-personalization. Um, that was in the context of using AI to build products for different customers, right? Or, or we, call it, may, we may call it segment of one, one product for one customer. But I'm also thinking, how do I use tools to do a hyper-personalization of a user experience, and how do I manage it well? And if I can manage well the user experience at a per subscriber level, it gives me the possibility of, of, of upselling and monetization as well. So for example, just now I was thinking that in a stadium scenario, my 4G customers would have a high ARPU 4G customers. When they have a poor experience in the stadium, I can trigger a, a, a campaign and say that, hello, Mr. Leong, actually, you know what? 5G is amazing. Would you consider subscribing 5G? So it's looking at the experience of a high ARPU user and trying to make sure that they enjoy it, enjoy a good service, and, and take the opportunity to upsell. Yeah. Fantastic. So uh, firstly, we are delighted as Canopus to provide you with a platform that has enabled this agentic AI workflows to already yield some business benefits to you. Mm. And we absolutely will add some of your requests into our roadmap yep. in the near future. My last question would be, you know, your experience and journey with using and seeing this agentic AI uh, framework in operation. Yep. Has that made you rethink your own organization's workflow and approach about how, and, and I think what some of the things you've mentioned in the past is that you have teams looking at different parts of your network, mm. but does this change the way you look at how you would need to restructure some parts of um, you know, the workflow in your organization? Yeah, you know, definitely. I think the, the bigger context is today's topic or this event is how, how, do, how does AI change us? Right? It's not just deploying a solution, it's our processes, our artifacts, our people will need to be trained, and I guess where you're getting to is from an organization point of view as well as process. So what I did is I changed my process in terms of um, customer complaint. We start, usually we start on the premise that the RAN has an issue, because core usually don't have an issue. If core has an issue, it's not an isolated issue. So we start with a premise of what is the user experience, whether it's on network or off network. Then only we start drilling down to, to you know, which, which, um, which domain should pick, up, pick this up. And that requires, like I say, change of organization and process because in, in most of the telco, you don't have an end-to-end -end team. Or if you have an end-to-end -end team, it will be a planning function, not so much of an operations or performance function. Usually, when we talk about performance, it's a RAN domain. So now, um, I pick a best of um, uh, SMEs from each domain to form an end-to-end team. And, and then they, they don't have any excuse anymore. They can't tell me no fault or found anymore. They have to pinpoint it to whatever root cause it is so that we can manage our user experience very, yeah, in, in a good way. So it's processes, it's the organization, the skills, and so on and so forth, yeah. That's absolutely fantastic to hear that the introduction of autonomous AI agents in your network is mm -hmm. actually making you rethink how your workforce um, and your workflows need to be rearranged to leverage this wonderful new technology. So on that note, thank you very much, Damien. It was thank a real you. pleasure talking with you. All right, thank, thank you. you. Cheers.